Last Thursday in Wellington was a very glitzy affair, uh, but the inspiration that came from the eight regional final, uh, winners in the Balance Farm Environment Awards from 2020 uh, was, of course, something out of this world. And I say that uh, with absolute um, conviction because if you were there on the night or you're watching the live stream, uh, every single one of those uh, regional winners were spectacular, absolutely out of this world. Uh, but there was a Waikato farmer and conservationist known as Gordon Stevenson and uh, a trophy was formed for a national ambassador for sustainable farming and growing from the New Zealand Environment uh, Farm Environment Trust. And in 2021, taking it home, uh, the very humble sheep, beef and deer farmers from Hawke's Bay, Evan and Linda Potter, who purchased Waipapa uh, back in 1997. And they set about transforming what they described as a blank canvas into the aesthetically pleasing, productive business, but extremely inspirational uh, farm environment showcase that it is today. Uh, Evan and Linda join us now from Central Hawke's Bay. Firstly, congratulations, guys. And I say humble, <laughs> Because I mean it, you were both shocked to win. Uh, absolutely, mm, um, <laughs> we've got the pleasure of spending a couple of days with um, those other like-minded individuals, and uh, man, the stuff they're doing and that the properties and stories that they tell, any of them could have could have won it. And what exactly separates us? I'm not not too sure to this date, so very unexpected. <laughs> and and that, that was something that we all discussed at the event, was the power of that workshop of bringing the eight uh, winners together. Uh, you, you must have felt like you were in your own tribe, Linda. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had a wonderful day just yeah, connecting and sharing lots of things, yeah, with our families and our lives and, yeah, what we do every day. It was really good. Uh, it's really special. Very refreshing to see that there's a whole lot of like-minded individuals doing it the length of New Zealand, so that's pretty cool. And the interesting uh, part about it is that this uh, goes back you know, nearly 10 years prior to regulators coming in and farm management plans, uh, you know, starting to be discussed, all of these regional winners were doing this because they knew that was the right thing to do. What set you on your journey when you first purchased the property to to, to now be in this position today that's being recognised? What were those standout things where, you know, it, you thought it was second nature to you? I guess we don't believe common sense is extinct. We believe it's a, a, a live species. And if you just look at a lot of the things that we've done that are not rocket science, that they, they make good management sense, they good, make good economic sense. Um, and long term, they, they are sustainable and they future proof your business. And as the world's turned and gone, um, yeah, it has put us in really good stead. Mm. Linda, I'd love you to take um, us back to when you first, you know, put those feet on the ground there in Waipapa in Central Hawke's Bay. Uh, what were some of those first things you did to benchmark uh, where you were currently at and where you wanted to get to? Um, even when we first started, um, had dealings with the um, local regional council and they um, said about um, mapping all the soils on the farm and so just knowing exactly what he was dealing with. And so then, um, yeah, decided to perhaps fence the gorge out in conjunction with QE2 and, and the council, and just they went from there. And 22% of your farmers retired to the QE2 National Trust in covenants. Uh, do you have plans to continue more, Evan? Uh, we have plans to retire more land that naturally lends itself towards that, um, whether that'll be under QE2 covenant or just covenant with the council, uh, unsure at this stage. It'll just depend on what suits. But, yeah, there's definitely probably probably another 5% or more of the farm that should probably have the land use altered from what it is now because it needs to be matched for, for long term. Um, Linda, there's a lot of discussion in the sector around how we uh, will climb, uh, combat climate change and our emissions of greenhouse gases uh, in the agricultural sector to, to reduce those. How do you believe that we can do this? 
um, oh, we can all just think about how we live and, and what our footprint is and just, yeah, change, I don't know, day-to-day thinking. And I, I think everybody in the in the whole country, it's not just the country, the urban people as well, yeah. Mm, and bringing, it, bringing that down. Yeah, and I, I think um, probably on the farm level there'll be a few more pines go in, just that they'll suit a certain spot. Um, but yeah, it's probably a lot of little things really, rather than one one major. It's interesting um, that you mentioned uh, that you are also deer farmers. It was the very first time that I met you when you took home the Sir Peter Alworthy uh, trophy at the Deer Industry uh, Conference a couple of years ago. Uh, and, you know, it's special for the deer industry as well to be acknowledged for environmental management. Yeah, I suppose most people think of deer as being a little bit destructive to the environment or perhaps not as environmentally friendly. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of it's a management and uh, understanding their behaviour and then um, working with them. So, yeah, I think it's pretty positive for the deer industry and we're a very close-knit community and we share a lot of ideas and do a bit of thinking outside the box. So, yeah, it's probably a big plus for us as deer farmers. Linda, can you talk us through some of the work that you've done on erosion control uh, and pest control as well? Um, we locally have a possum, possum control program, which um, all farmers, hopefully in Hawke's Bay, and probably New Zealand should be, but um, are a part of. And so they have monitoring every, often, uh, often monitor. fairly regularly. Yeah, very regularly, and filling up bait stations and things like that. Um, and we ourselves do cats and rats and ferrets and all sorts of things that you find around. Um, and then with a bit of an erosion control, you sort of look at different parts in the farm along with your council people. And we've um, fenced off bits and pieces and, and planted a few trees. <laughs> Quite a few really, but... And currently the Hawke's Bay Regional Council's um, right into erosion control and, and we've been working very closely with them for a number of years and um, with our, through our relationships we're doing quite a lot in terms of the old slipping mudstone gully and just fencing it off and planting it up with a mix of natives, poplars, all sorts of things. The judges um, said that they were impressed by the balance of you know, sound financial performance uh, to fund your environmental projects. How important is it to be economically sustainable um, to be able to be in a position to continue to regenerate your environment? It's number one. Yeah, it's, it is everything. <laughs> if, if you're not financial, you've got very limited choices no matter what you're doing. Um, so you have to be profitable. You've got to work out a system that is sustainable and fits in and delivers a, a positive cash result every year by, by something major going wrong like a drought or maybe COVID <laughs> taking 20% off most of your product prices. But, yeah, you need a sustainable business model. So, I mean, the whole ethos of sustainability is... Um, from a holistic point of view, everything is not just the environment or just accounts or or just the land. Um, they all work together. Yeah, and, and that's 100% true when you can see the results um, that continuously be interconnected in all the roles. I have such a long list of everything that you've been involved in um, over the last 23 years um, to build what is being described as not only um, an incredible environmental story but an extremely practical uh, farming operation in central Hawke's Bay. Can I... Can I lastly just ask um, your thoughts on how we're setting ourselves up as a country to tell our stories, connect our stories uh, with a wider community and what we can be doing uh, better to ensure that more of these wonderful stories of farming in this particular way are told? I think probably... um Others that are doing fantastic stuff, because there's a lot out there. I mean, we've got many friends that are doing as good or better than us. <clears throat> you actually probably have to take that step and, and think or step outside your own little fence and <clears throat> not be afraid to, I guess, share with others in the wider community what you're actually doing. So whether that be through Into These or whether it be through working with different groups. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably just start thinking outside your own little world.
Mm. And it, it does, does take a lot of bravery, Linda, um, to put, you know, we live in a tall poppy culture and it's mm. it's something that's very hard for us to, to put our head up and say, look what I've done. Yeah, it very much is. But um, oh no, when you've started doing it, it's, um, it's very good to um, get you to look back and to see what you actually have done, to say it to yourself, not necessarily to the rest of the world. So, yeah, it's very beneficial. Yeah, I, I think personal growth, I mean, we're right outside our comfort zone with where, where we are and we're probably – to a while, a little while ago, we were the last people that wanted to put their heads up above the above the grass, so to speak. Um, and while we're not loving the spot of having our head above the grass, we accept that um, someone needs someone to do it. To, yeah. And we chose to enter the awards because um, it, there are good stories out there to share. And so that's just one of the things that comes with it. And um, some people will like what we do, and others won't. And everyone's entitled to their opinion. Oh, and we absolutely love what you're both doing. Evan and Linda Potter, farming at Waipampa in Central Hawke's Bay, uh, the winner of the National Showcase, the Gordon Stevenson Memorial Trophy there. Uh, and, of course, take those advi- that advice there from Evan and Linda. As I explained to you, humble, goodness gracious, uh, and they have been able to do it. You know, go forth and enter the Balanced Farm Environment Awards uh, and tell your unique story because you know what? No one One's going to do it for you. And uh, we are all in need of uh, more and more and more good stories coming out of the land. Oh, nice boots. Yeah, thanks. They're new. <laughs> ben, Ben, you alright? Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Just me getting pretty hardy. Eh? Yeah. I just said to myself, Ben, work hard. You deserve new boots. <laughs> <laughs>